morning. Well, morning here, Kat, afternoon to you. How are you going today? Hi, I'm good. I have no idea what time it is, but hello. Hello, it's 9.30 in the morning here, so we're doing quite well. But look, congratulations on the film's release. I watched it with my girlfriend the other night and we both laughed, smiled and cheered and cried. So I think you have the perfect Valentine's Day date night movie Yay. in Marry Me. And with rom-coms, it's one of the genres that's withstood the test of cinematic time. And I wanted to know what was one element for you as a director that you wanted to put into Marry Me that would leave your stamp on the genre? Um, I'm so glad that you say that. So many people say the rom-com is dead and I'm like, the rom-com has never died. And you know, I, I wanted to lean unapologetically into that genre. But like you said, you do need something that makes it stand out. And you know, to me, this is the story of two people falling in love. It is also independently the story of a woman who is an artist finding her voice. And you know, as she goes through um, this, this romance, she's also crafting her career and navigating, you know, finding a way to use what she's going through emotionally um, to fuel her art. I love Notting Hill. It's something we definitely reference when talking about this, but you really only see through Hugh Grant's character, the world perspective. And even then it's just about this relationship. And so to me, this film is really bigger than just the romance. Um, and it's also a bit of a musical that harkens back to the Busby Berkeley days. And no, they're not bursting into song because they can't contain their emotions anymore. But the original songs that we crafted for the film are all tied to the emotional narrative um, of the story. And so I think, you know, to me, those two things really set it apart from all the rom-coms that I love. <laughs> uh, on the other end of that spectrum, though, what do you believe is one of the tried and tested aspects of the rom-com that really worked in Marry Me? I think, you know, the idea of running, you know, running to your love at the end of the movie when you, when you figure it all out is something we've seen a lot of times. But to me, it works again and again and again because everybody wants to have that boldness and that bravery to seize something they love and, you know, make sacrifices and just cast off the shackles of everyday life to go and be, you know, to go and hold that dream. Exactly. And like in that saying that the fantasy element of the movie, I saw a featurette recently where you did mention that this movie does feel like a fantasy movie. Is that something that felt important to you during the initial stages of getting it together to have that fantasy love feeling? I think that when you do find love, it always feels a little bit like a fantasy and reality is suspended and the world is a little more colorful and things that you might not notice are suddenly crystal clear. And so I, I think when you set out to capture love, there is a heightened reality to it that, you know, you could call fantasy or you could also just call falling in love. And, you know, one of the things that one of the, when I look at a script, I always go, gosh, what's that one moment that has to work to make the rest of the film work? And of course, in this, it's her choosing this guy out of the audience. And she doesn't choose him because he's handsome. And she doesn't choose him because she's desperate. She chooses him because she looks out at a sea of people on their phones, Instagramming, laughing at her, happy to see her fall, you know, gossiping. And she sees a guy actually listening to her and listening to what she's saying. And that to me was always the heart of the film. Amazing. Kat, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. it. Congrats on the movie. That's it. And uh, we're eagerly awaiting She-Hulk. I just want to put that out there. Yay. We can't wait. <laughs> Thanks, awesome. Kat. Bye.